Thank you, everybody, for joining us again. I hope you have a copy of the Word of God. And let's uh, dig in quickly now to discover what it is that God has for us here uh, in the Word today. I want to talk to you this uh, day on uh, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. That's probably one of the first little songs I ever learned. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. And then he goes on to give that chorus that Jesus loves me. That's one of the most profound statements I think that anybody could ever, ever say. Have you ever really thought about how much Jesus really does love you? I would encourage you sometime today or in these next few days, sit down with a piece of paper and a pen and just write down every good thing about your life. Just make a list. Everything that you can think good, your talents, your gifts, your ability, your home, your family, your health, life itself. Do you know that you wouldn't have any of those things? Had God not in his grace and his mercy given them to you? The Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. So anything that you can name about good in your life, you wouldn't have it. Even life, you wouldn't have it if God didn't give it to you. Titus chapter number 3 and verse 5, the Bible says that he saved us not because of righteous things that we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. You understand something, that that is exactly what Jesus came to do. Uh, the Bible is really clear in the Gospel of Luke in the 19th chapter in the 10th verse. When God says to you and me that I have come to seek and to save that which was lost. I would encourage you here today to underline the word saved and lost because that's the category that every one of us, we will fit in one or the other of that category. You're either saved or you are lost. It's not about gender. It's not about culture. It's not about race. It's not about your education. It's not about uh, your wealth. It's not about your IQ. We fit in one of two categories. We're either saved or we are lost. And the beautiful thing about it is, is that God took the initiative to come looking for us so that he might save us us. Uh, you say, well, preacher, I'm not saved, so I guess then that I am lost. Now, I, I want you to hear something that maybe you have never heard before in all of your life. When, when you make statement like that, well, I'm not saved, so I guess I'm lost, uh, maybe in your mind you're thinking that, man, that's a put down. Uh, but it's really not. Can I say to you, it's really a compliment. Have you ever thought about being lost as a compliment? You say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, it implies that somebody loves you. It implies that somebody cares about you. Lostness is an indicative that you are really valuable. Uh, you're incredibly valuable to God. You say, well, Mike, how do you know that I'm incredibly valuable to God? Well, it's a pretty simple answer. It's because Jesus came to seek out you and to save you. That makes you valuable. I did a little research today and I found out that all of the airlines in the world will lose approximately 25 million 
baggage and luggage every year. 25 million bags a year, airlines. And, and, and listen to this. About 350,000 of those are permanently lost. Now, you get to thinking about those permanently lost baggage. Some of that contain nothing but just some frivolous things like clothes or dirty clothes and, and, and things like that. But then some of those bags contain things that are infinitely valuable. And they are not just misplaced. They're lost. And there's a big difference. Uh, if you go into the art world and a masterpiece is somehow misplaced and becomes lost, do you know that that piece of artwork actually gains in value after uh, it is lost? Um, you understand, um, if you're saved, uh, this message today... Um, I hope we'll just help you to be able to explain the difference of being lost and saved to somebody else. Uh, but I want to ask the question today, to those of you that have never been saved, what does it really mean to be lost? Have you ever just contemplated that? Have you ever just thought through that just for a moment or two? What does it mean uh, to be lost? I, I want to ask another question today. Uh, what's God done about our lostness? Well, what provisions has he made uh, for those that are lost? And then uh, I want to ask when you uh, come to the understanding of what you're missing out on and what God has done in response to it, what do you do about it? What is your next move when you come uh, to that place? And so I want to turn our attention for a little while this morning Based on Luke 19, 10, Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Uh, I want to go to the lost and found chapter of the Bible. And that's found in Luke chapter 15. And in Luke chapter 15, there are three stories that are about being lost and found. And the three stories are this. There was, first of all, the lost sheep. And you'll know that a shepherd had... Uh, been out and he had been keeping his sheep all day long and watching over them and uh, it was drawing evening time and he's uh, going to pin up those sheep in the sheepfold. And so as they are coming into the sheepfold, he's counting them. One, two, three, 44, 54, 92, 93, 95, 97, 98, 99. And he's thinking, wait a minute. That's the last one, and there's supposed to be a hundred. Well, where, where is that hundredth sheep? And, and so the story says that he leaves the 99, and he goes out to find that sheep that had wandered astray. And he stays out all night long looking for that one little lamb that had gone astray. And he comes across it, he finds it, he picks it up, he carries it back to the 99 that had been in the sheepfold. And the Bible says that he did something really incredible. He just threw a party. And he says, look, look, I've found the sheep that had gone astray. And then the second story is about a woman who had 10 coins. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us uh, where those 10 coins were located. Maybe they were on the dresser top. And uh, she got to looking at those coins, and she counted them, and she discovered that one of the coins had gone missing. And it, she, she was so distraught about it that she searched high and low, and she swept the entire house looking for that coin and she looked and she looked feverishly and so finally she found that coin and she was so ecstatic about it she called all of her neighbors together and she says look look here is that coin that I, I was missing and I, I found it and, and now I've got all my coins together I, I've got the ten now and they had a big party well the third story is about the lost son. This younger son of a very wealthy man uh, goes to his daddy and says, Daddy, I, I understand that uh, 
it is not time for me to receive my inheritance, but uh, the fact of the matter is, I want my inheritance, and I want it right now. So would you give me half of what belongs, give me all of what belongs to me, half of the kingdom? The father very reluctantly uh, gave him his inheritance. And the Bible says that this old boy went off down to the Las Vegas of Israel, or he went down to uh, New Orleans of Israel, somewhere down on uh, highway number one. I, I don't know where he went, but he went down there, and the Bible says that he wasted all of his inheritance on riotous living. He spent it on gambling. He spent it on alcohol. He spent it on women. He spent it on his friends. Man, he had a ton of friends. He was having a big time in his life as long as the money held out. He had all kinds of buddies as long as he had the money to spend. But the Bible tells us that he spent everything that he had. And he wound up living in a pigsty, eating the food of the pigs. The Bible says that he came to himself and he got to thinking. Wait a minute. Uh, the servants in my father's house have it better than me. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to daddy's. And I'm going to tell daddy, daddy, I, I, don't, I don't expect anything. You, you just let me live as a servant in your house. And, and I'm sorry for what I've done. And so that's exactly what he did. He went back to his father's house. And you know the rest of the story, how that the father embraced him and restored him back to a rightful position in that home. Now these stories have a common denominator. You know what the common denominator of those three stories is? A great big party. I, I almost entitled the message today, let's throw a party. But it didn't. I, I, I just think that it's all about Jesus and Jesus loving us unconditionally. Now let me talk to you for a few minutes about these three stories and about the lost and found chapter in the Bible. You see, to be lost is to be disconnected from God, disjointed from God. It means to be spiritually lost. I, I, I kind of want to dig into that. I want to drill down to that for a few minutes. And I want to talk to you, first of all, about what that means. What does lostness mean? And I think we can discover that by looking at these three stories. First of all, it means that you're not on the right path. You're not on the right path. Look at the sheep for a minute. Uh, here the sheep were, uh, and they were all together, and the shepherd was there leading and guiding. And one of the little sheep, he decided, you know, the grass looks a little bit greener over there on that side. And the water looks a little bit fresher right over there. And so he kind of wanders away onto his own path rather than the path that the shepherd had just for him. I, I'm going to tell you, sheep not only do that, human beings do that. It is human nature to wander off of the path that God has for us. I know that I did that as a kid. I, I drove my mom and dad crazy uh, as I was growing up over there in the mountains. I'd kind of disappear in the mornings and, and just show back up late that afternoon and they had no clue where I was and they'd get out ringing a dinner bell. There was a big old bell there at our house and they'd ring that bell, ring that bell and, and, and that was my cue. And you've wandered too far off and they're looking for you and it's time that you got back home. You know, the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6 that everybody wanders off the right path. All have gone astray. Everybody turns to their own way, away from God's path, away from God's direction. And I want to tell you something. When you're living your life on your own path, it means that you are lost and that you are undone and you're on the wrong road. Do you know that that's the number one thing that I'm seeing right now in the lives of so many 
people. Uh, prophecy tells us that in the last days, uh, people will do what is right, not in God's eyes, but in their own eyes, having it their way. But you, you not only miss the right path, when you're lost, you miss the right protection. Again, uh, from the story of the sheep, the shepherd uh, was the protector of the sheep because the sheep are such vulnerable animals. They don't have claws. They don't have sharp teeth. They can't defend themselves at all. They're not very fast, so they can't get away from their predators. And they are totally dependent on the protection of the shepherd for their safety. Zechariah chapter 10 and verse number 2, the Bible says, The people wander like sheep oppressed for lack of a shepherd, for lack of a protector. When you read Psalm 23, what is one of the phrases that reminds you of what I'm discussing here today? When the Bible says, the Lord is my what? Yes, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my protector. And I want to tell you, friend, listen to me very carefully. If you don't have Jesus as a protector and you're wandering out there on your own, you're not doing anything in the world but inviting the predators out there to devour you alive. I, I believe with all of my heart that the reason so many people are uptight, anxious, and frustrated during this time of pandemic uh, the one that they're, they're wringing their hands and, and scared and fear has gripped their heart is because they don't have a shepherd. Uh, they, they, they're not looking to Christ as their protector. I'll tell you the passage that has comforted me and strengthened me all through this process is Romans 8, 28. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to those that are called according to his purpose. And when you understand that you are in the hands of God and that everything that happens to us is filtered first through his hands before it ever gets to us, then there is no need to be afraid because he is our shepherd. He is our protector. Now let me give you the third. Lostness means you have missed God's plan. Now you think about the coin for just a minute. You know, a, a coin um, still has value about it when it's lost. It's still worth money. But if that coin gets lost, then uh, it has lost the plan that it was designed for. A coin is to be in circulation. A coin is to be used to buy and to sell and to be generous with. It has a purpose behind it. But when that coin gets lost, it loses the plan that is for its existence. The, you know, the Bible says that the plans I have for you are not to hurt you or to harm you, but to prosper you and to bring you to an expected end. And if you're lost without Jesus, if you don't have a shepherd, if you're not saved, then you have no means of fulfilling the plan that God has designed just for your life. I want to ask you a simple question. Have you ever just sat and thought about and wondered what God could do in you and through you and with you if you were totally in God's hands? You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. Oh, friend, God has a wonderful plan for your life. Don't miss it. Let, let me give you the fifth one, okay, or the fourth one. You, you miss God's peace. When, when you are lost, you don't have the peace of God. I, I think about... Uh, that prodigal son in the scripture that chose to rebel against his father and he left his father's home and he took the inheritance and the Bible says he wasted it on riotous living and, and, and suddenly he found his whole life upside down and he lost the joy of living 
and the Bible says that he lost his peace, that he was miserable, and that he was lonely. I want to tell you something. Now, listen very, very carefully. Nothing will rob you of your peace any quicker than a broken relationship. Nothing will destroy harmony any more than a broken relationship. And the fact of the matter is this. When you're out of harmony with God, you will never be in harmony with the people here in your horizontal relationships. When that vertical relationship is out of kilter, the horizontal relationships will never be right. Why is that? Because you're not designed to live in conflict with God. You're designed to live in harmony and unity with God. And yet when you get to the point in your life that you thumb your nose at God and you say to God, God, I don't care what you have for my life. I'm going out here on my own. I know what's better for me and I'm going to choose to live my life on my own terms. I promise you it will never go well. It'll never go good. So the question I have for you right now is, do you have the peace of God? And if you don't have the peace of God, friend, you're lost. And you need to be saved. Now, number five, you miss your place in heaven. You know, one of the greatest questions uh, I have in my mind is this. God, uh, why did you give us the ability to choose? Why did, why did you give us that ability? to live for you or not live for you? Why did you give us the choice to love you or not to love you? That, that's an eternal question. So God says to us, choose to live for me, and if you choose not to live for me, then you are choosing to live alienated from me forever. Let, let, me, let me make a a statement here, I don't, I don't mean for it to sound harsh, but let, let me just ask you a question. Um, if uh, you can't choose to love God down here, what makes you think that you could choose to love him in eternity? And you won't. And you can't. I want to ask this before we go on to this next point. I want to ask you something. What is so important to you in your life right now uh, than it is to know where you're going to spend eternity? What's so important to you than knowing and loving and pleasing God with your life? Can, can you just put a finger on what it is so important to you that's more important than spending eternity with God? What's so important that uh, you can't love and, and know and, 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 and have fellowship with God here? It, it, when you come to understand what that is that is so important, then you've just discovered what your God is. Think about that. Pray about that. You understand these stories, these three uh, really talk about the reason that people remain spiritually lost. When you think about the lost sheep, uh, it, it, it's just natural for that sheep just to wander off. And it's just natural in humanity for human beings just to wander off. When you think about the coin itself, it is the circumstances that find itself in, in that coin that keeps that coin uh, Lost. I, I found out something uh, during this pandemic. Uh, you, you understand that old coin? He he couldn't. He didn't have much of a chance because uh, he couldn't do anything about his condition. I may say that again in a few minutes. Uh, he, he didn't have anything to do with it. It's just kind of the circumstance of his life that he got lost. And, and here's what I found out about some people in this pandemic. Some people during the pandemic have chosen to turn to God and to trust Him and to love Him and to live for Him. And I've seen that others have chosen to live for self and to choose other things in their life. And then the son, you understand, it's the choices that he made that kept, kept him 
uh, in a spiritually lost condition. And, and, and can I just say that it's the same way here today is that there are people that remain lost because they choose to do what they want to do. Uh, that son said, you know what, Dad? I, I know what I'm supposed to do. I know what uh, is right about this, but the fact of the matter is, I want what's coming to me right now. And so many people live their life in the same fashion. I know what's right, but I'm just going to have it my way. I'm going to make this choice. Now, hear this. Hear this. You ready? Listen, listen. Regardless of whether it's natural or whether it's circumstantial or whether it's because of choices that you are right now spiritually lost, I can say that the sheep and the coin and the son never lost their value. And you haven't lost your value. Now, so we've looked at the meaning of lostness. I want to look now at the mercy that is extended to our lostness. Uh, I'm, I'm intrigued every time that I hear testimonies and people talk about, well, here was my life before I received Christ. Here is how that I realized that I needed Christ. And now here is my life now after I have been saved. And can I say to you, that's still a good word, saved. It's a huge word. And, and it all revolves around the grace and the mercy of God. You wouldn't be saved today had it not been for His grace and mercy. And you will never be saved without His grace and His mercy. Let, let me tell you what it does, that grace and mercy. Here's what it does. Here's God's extension. It rescues, first of all, it rescues me from me. Here's what I found out about me, and I've said this a couple of times in the last few weeks. My biggest problem is the person that wears my hat. My biggest problem is me. I, I was sitting uh, the other day and uh, helping this guy work through some situations, and, and he was talking to me about some of the things in his own life, and I said, well, there's your issue. He said, what do you mean there's my issue? I said, you're your biggest problem. If you can get you fixed, then all of this other stuff will take care of itself. We need a Savior, ladies and gentlemen, that will save us from our own hang-ups, from our own insecurities, from our own fears, from our own preconceived notions about God, from our own understanding of life, from our own understanding about other people. We need to be rescued from us. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5 the Bible says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom to rescue everybody. That's what the word means. Some people are like that old sheep. He got us off to himself. And it's the shepherd that took the initiative to go get that sheep. Others are like that coin that's lost and you can't do anything about it. You're unaware that you're even lost. And it's the Savior who has taken the initiative to see that you get saved. Let me give you the second thing that the mercy and the grace of God does. It restores my plan. Do you remember that coin that I told you about that was intended to be in circulation, that was intended to generate uh, generosity, uh, that was intended with a plan and a purpose that was to be used? So here's how God does. He restores his plan. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 he says, come to me, all you who are lay, uh, weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The coin gets lost and doesn't even know that he is lost. The coin gets lost and he is helpless to do anything about it. And I can just tell you, most of the people that I encounter that are spiritually lost are just like that. Most of them don't have a clue that they're lost. Most of them don't have an understanding that they are helpless to do anything about it. Everyone that I know needs rescuing. Everyone that I know uh, needs the plan that God 
has in store for them to be restored. Joel chapter 2 and verse 25, the Bible says, I will give you back at what you lost in the years and when the locusts ate all your crops. So let me ask you, what, what's eating your lunch? What's destroying your profitability in your life? What is robbing you of the joy and the peace and the contentment that only God can provide in you? Now let me move to the third and final point. And that is, now that you know that what it means to be lost, now that you know how God has taken the initiative to see uh, that you can be saved, what's your move? So let me talk to you about moving out of your lostness. You say, how do I do that? Well, the same way the prodigal son did. Let me just share with you what he did. You ready? Here we go. The first thing that he did was that he acknowledged that he had made a mess out of his life. And that's the first thing that you need to do is acknowledge the fact I've made a mess out of things. There's got to be a better way of living than what I am living. I'm, I've faked it long enough. I've had pretense long enough. I've dealt with these failures in my life long enough. So it's acknowledging your current condition. May I say to you, until you can get to that point, when you acknowledge your lostness, you can never be saved. You've got to come to grips with the fact that you are lost in order to be saved. Sometimes you got to figure out that you're in the pig pen before you can go back home. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29, 13, he says, you will find me. When that becomes the desperation of your heart. So you got to acknowledge, I'm lost. I need to be saved. And then you admit that you are a sinner. In other words, just own it. Be honest about your sin, just like the prodigal in his own life. He said, I have sinned against God, and I have sinned against you. And the Bible says that that happened when he came to his senses. In other words, when he admitted, man, I've got a problem. I'm lost. I need to be saved. I've got issues. By the way, can I say to you, you will never be saved until you acknowledge that you've made a mess out of your life and that you admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. Now the third thing is that you have to advance toward God. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father's house. But he went back with an entirely different attitude than he had when he left. Before he left, he went to his father and he says, give me, give me, give me. But now the second time that he goes back to the father, he says, make me, make me. You, you understand what he did? He moved from a selfful, selfish life into a selfless life. He moved from me to God. It's all about me to it's all about about God. And can I say to you this, to this perfect day today, that is salvation. When you move from self to God, and by the way, can I tell you, if you have never done that, you are still lost and that you need to be saved. Now you're still valuable, but you're still lost. So look for a minute at the father's response. He said, Daddy, just make me one of your servants. He said, are you kidding me? Have you lost your mind completely? You're my boy. Bring this boy the best robe that's in the house. Put the ring, that signet ring on his finger, which is indicative of a credit card. Now, give him back his ring and put some sandals on this boy's feet and go get the best calf that we have and let's barbecue tonight for this one that was lost has now been found. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. The final scripture that I want to give you. The Bible says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Today, God is ready to receive you. Ladies and gentlemen, 
you are valuable to God. Would you right now admit and acknowledge your spiritual lostness to God? And would you just say, you know, I've made a mess out of my life. And God, I'm ready to go home. I, I, I don't want to live in this uh, pigsty existence anymore. I, I know, God, you've got a wonderful plan in mind for me. And I'm, I'm, I'm on the wrong road. I'm on the wrong path. But God, with your help, I want to come home. If that's your desire, would you pray something like this with me? I'd like every head bowed, every eye closed. And if you're lost today, if you have never acknowledged your lost spiritual condition, if you've never been reconciled and rescued by God, today you can be. And it's just simply a matter of acknowledging the fact that you're lost, that you need Jesus, and receive him into your heart. Would you pray something like this with me right where you are in your home? This word or something like it. Heavenly Father, I sure am missing your purpose and your plan for me. I'm on the wrong road. I'm on the wrong path. God, I, I, uh, I acknowledge today that I've made a mess out of my life. And Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner and that I need a Savior. Heavenly Father, would you please forgive me of all my sin? And right where I am, I receive you into my heart and into my life. Please forgive me of all my sin. And may in the power of your Holy Spirit, I live for you the rest of my life. Thank you for forgiving my sin. Thank you for saving my soul. If you prayed that prayer with me just then as I prayed it, whether you're watching on Facebook Live, would you just write in the comments section of that, would you give us the fact, Preacher Mike, I prayed that prayer with you. Or maybe you would go and, and be so bold as to go to our website at fbcit.org and go to that part that says, I prayed to receive Christ today. And, and would you just click on that and please give us your name. I, I promise you I'm not going to put you on any kind of mailing list. I'm not going to solicit any money or anything from you. I simply want to be praying for you and I want to put some materials in your hands that will help you grow to become who God wants you to be. I want to welcome you to God's family. The greatest decision that you've ever made. Thank you for praying that. And you and I are going to spend eternity in heaven together. God bless you is our prayer. Thank you for watching Decision for Life. Our location, life group, and program information are available online at fbcit.org. We hope you will take the opportunity to join us in person. Thank you from the family of First Baptist Church Indian Trail.